The fighting genre has always been a popular one in gaming, so it isn't uncommon for franchises to make their own spins on it. With something as big as SpongeBob SquarePants, it's to be expected that it would have its own share of them. When most people think about Nickelodeon fighting games, the ones that usually come to mind are either the All-Star Brawls or the Super Brawls that came before them. Today we're going to look at the SpongeBob versions that aren't talked about quite as often. Let's start with Reef Rumble, one that's fondly remembered by many who used to play it. This was made by Smashing Ideas, one of Nick.com's best developers in my opinion. They consistently released high-quality Flash games for different cartoons, even when they had basic concepts to work with, so you can expect this to be pretty good. At the menu, we see a muscular SpongeBob screaming at us. Oh no, please don't erase my name tag. My name is not loose. In the story, the Bikini Bottom citizens are fighting in a martial arts competition. The rules here specify no tentacle biting or eye gouging. You heard right, this SpongeBob game specifically tells us not to gouge someone's eyes out. Don't you love it when cartoons teach the really important lessons? We're then given a choice between arcade mode or tournament mode. We only have four characters to choose from so far, but we can unlock two of them from the looks of it. Arcade mode is a simple fight where you can go up against one opponent. In tournament, you fight all of them until you win. Every fighter has a punch, a kick, a block, and a special move. But every special move is just a projectile that's more or less the same. The fighters are animated, but the backgrounds are taken from scenes in the show. We also get some crispy images next to the health bars. Our fighters so far are Sponge. Bob, Squidward, Patrick, and Sandy. Squidward is the only one in a different outfit than usual. I think it makes sense from a story perspective because he's probably taking it more seriously than anyone else. He heard the term martial arts has arts in it and decided he needed to master it. During every fight, the characters say things from the show. Finally, the moment of truth! Look at those guns! <laughs> oh my. Your score goes up with every hit you land, so you have incentive to play if you care about more than just winning the tournament. The code for the special move is different for every character, and some are easier to pull off than others, such as Sandy's, which is simply right right A. Then there's SpongeBob's, which requires you to remember more. But if you can, you can easily spam them to victory. Squidward shoots his clarinet and takes up a good portion of the screen with his body, so he's an absolute beast. Play as him for the best result. Though more often than not, your opponent will block more than anything. They actually hold blocks for a long time, so if you just keep spamming the punch and kick buttons, you can easily beat them. Just like in Jingle Brawl. One thing that the game doesn't mention is that when pulling off a special move, the left and right controls are flipped based on which side of the screen you're facing. So if the instructions tell you to hit right and you're facing left, you have to hit left. Eventually, you reach Larry the Lobster, who makes for a great addition to a fighting game. He's fast and will land a lot of hits, but if you're persistent enough, you can win the two rounds required to move on and reach the final boss. You find it to be Plankton controlling a robot Mr. Krabs, but strangely enough, Larry is far more difficult than him. Just stay out of the range of his boot and hit him with a projectile until he goes down. But watch out for his laser eyes, because those really hurt. Once you beat him, you unlock him and Larry as playable characters. They're fun to play as, but everyone controls more or less the same. I had the easiest time with Squidward, but as long as you can hit the keys fast enough, you should be able to win it with anyone. Simple as it may be, this is a lot of fun. In a way, I actually appreciate the simplicity. There's something so welcoming about these lower budget games. It's short and sweet, but I love it. It would later be reskinned as a fairly odd parents game when Smashing Ideas went on to make Fairies of Fury. So if you're a fan of both Reef Rumble and Fairly Odd Parents, you might get a kick out of it. So that was one SpongeBob fighting game, but there are actually a few others. This one isn't in the traditional Street Fighter esque format, but it's still worth checking out. This is Bikini Bottom Bust Up, made by Sarbakin. Like most Sarbakin games, this is a popular one. It's similar to the game Punch Out, but instead of boxing, you're showing off your karate moves. SpongeBob is the only playable character, and you have to defeat everyone else. You can do a left punch, a right punch, a left kick, a right kick, and a special move. You can also dodge by moving to the left or right. Your first opponent is Patrick, and as can be expected, he's the easiest one. Meters in each corner indicate how much health you have based on how many hits you take. You also have dots leading to a star along the side of it. When they fill up all the way, you can use your special move by throwing Gary at your opponent to attack. Your enemies also have special moves, but you can dodge them most of the time. If you're really good at mashing buttons, the special move might actually be more trouble than it's worth. 
You can easily button mash to beat enemies like Patrick who aren't very fast. They won't even get the chance to fight back. But if you switch it up to hit the space bar, you might give them an opening. We'll refer to this button mashing tactic as the Jingle Brawl method. But this won't keep you alive forever. After winning two rounds against Patrick, you go up against Sandy, and this one requires more dodging. You can still button mash to some extent, but she often uses her tail tickle special move and it can be a real game ender. Kicks are stronger than punches, so even though it takes a little longer for Spongebob to pull one off, it might be worth giving a try. Sandy can be annoying, but she'll eventually go down if you try hard enough. Then it's on to Squidward, the final enemy. Just like in Reef Rumble, he's a monster who will absolutely ruin your day. Even this one pose reflects how vicious he is. The strategy is to hit him with kicks as much as you can. His health goes down slowly, but you'll get there eventually. <laughs> For his special move, he turns into a tornado and flies into you. It's really fast and hard to dodge. <laughs> yep, this is yet another game with the Diet SpongeBob voice library. Like with Reef Rumble, you can also go for a high score, just in case you want to challenge yourself a little more since there are only three opponents. It's neat, and I think it has a decent difficulty balance. If you want to try something similar, this one is called Monster Mashup, made by Workin' Man. Patrick is a giant evil monster facing a robot plankton in a boxing match. Referee Spongebob announces the match, and you can fight Mecha Plankton by either hooking to the left, hooking to the right, or dodging. You go by Patrick the Great, because remember when Patrick led that massive conquest to build one of the biggest empires in history? What, didn't they teach you that in school? You also have to watch your energy because it drains the more you attack. It does come back though. I like the animation in this, and it looks like you're fighting on top of a building, which is cool, but there isn't really too much to see here. Though it should be mentioned that your health doesn't regenerate with every new round, so this is essentially an endurance test to see how long you can last. This was made to celebrate SpongeBob's 10 year anniversary, along with a bunch of other Flash games made by different companies. Most of these were really simplistic, so it isn't surprising that there isn't much going on in this. But we've saved the most detailed one for last. This one doesn't have a listed developer, but they sure didn't pull any punches with it. This is called Bikini Bottom Brawlers. As soon as we start up, we can see this game looks really good. It's colorful, it's vibrant, it has that SpongeBob energy. You know it's about to be great. You can choose either Story or Practice Mode, which is basically Tournament versus Arcade. Then you choose a fighter. I will admit, the fighter selection is a little unconventional in Story Mode. Once you select your fighter, you click the arrow to move to the next screen. I'm used to a prompt coming up to confirm who I selected, so it confused me at first. Each character also has five different outfits, so you can make them look as goofy as you desire. We have Spongebob, Patrick, Sandy, Mr. Krabs, Squidward, and Plankton in a robot suit of himself. Talk about vain. Then in story mode, you fight through each of the fighters until you win. They're in a set order no matter who you play as. Before every fight, the two characters have a dialogue exchange at the loading screen. Most of the time, they just quote the show, but it's nice to see this attention to detail. You have three different arenas, which may not be a lot, but they are fun to play through. This is a platform fighter where the goal is to ring out your opponent. You have a jump, a regular attack, a special attack you perform by pressing Z, and a super special attack you get by loading up your meter at the top of the screen. All of the fighters have their own strengths and weaknesses, and there are definitely ones that are stronger than others. Like he usually is in stuff like this, SpongeBob is well-rounded. He's probably the second best fighter in the whole thing. His regular karate attack is effective, but his Z attack is bad because it flings him backwards without much control of where he lands. You might not want to do this if you're trying to stay on the platforms, but his super special move is great and it hardly ever misses. It also keeps in character with him being bad at driving. And check out the little dance he does whenever he wins. It's hilarious. You know what this calls for? I think we need to have a dance party. Patrick is horrendous and you shouldn't play as him. Unless you want a challenge, of course. He moves very slowly and his basic attack causes him to dash forward. You're playing a dangerous game if you dash forward on these tiny little platforms. Neither of his special attacks have respectable range and it's really easy to dodge both of them. It's no wonder he's the first one you fight in story mode. He was basically made to be practiced on. But Squidward is a bit more complicated. His regular move isn't that great. I mean, it looks like this. What did you expect? 
And for his special move, he turns into handsome Squidward, but not even his logic-defying handsomeness can make it effective. But he makes up for it with his super special move, which can demolish you if it hits. Few things hurt more than the sound of a poorly played clarinet. Mr. Krabs is alright. He has a basic regular attack, but he jumps for his special one, which means you have to time it correctly. You also have to time his super special attack because he moves in a zigzag. It does a fair share of damage, though. Unfortunately, he's very slow and has a pathetic jump. He actually isn't too different from Plankton. He's the final boss of story mode, but he isn't actually that strong. His special attack is similar to Mr. Krabs, where he teleports upwards, and for his special attack, he sends an army of Plankton... clones, I guess, to attack in sequence. It's actually really easy to avoid. But Sandy... now let me tell you about Sandy. She is so overpowered that it's actually unfair to the other fighters. Again, she isn't even the final one you fight in story mode. She's fast, her super special attack is extremely easy to pull off compared to everyone else's, and for her regular special attack, she becomes the hibernating version of herself and barrels into the enemy. She can run them right off the map in this form. It isn't even that much of a risk to her because she can easily stop herself from going too far. If this were a multiplayer game, I wouldn't be surprised if Sandy got banned from competitions. Now there is sort of a reason for why there isn't too much balance among the fighters. This was intended to be story mode centered without much emphasis on individual fights. Note how the designated arcade mode is called practice mode. Practice for what, you ask? Well, practice for story mode, of course. So each fighter was made to get increasingly harder, more or less. It doesn't entirely account for who you play as, but there's one other aspect that can shake up the fights, regardless of who you're playing as. There is a wide variety of items you can pick up and use to fight with. Actually, a very wide variety. Some of them are highly effective, such as tridents and golden spatulas, and others do basically nothing, like the ketchup and mustard bottles. I like the jellyfish because you can throw them and they'll sting whoever goes where they land. The downside is, it can hurt both fighters. Not so much of a downside when your enemy throws it, though. I also like these realistic fish you can fight with. When you hit someone with it enough times, it turns into sushi. But most items are simple ones you can fight or shoot enemies with. You kind of have to use your own judgment to see which ones do more damage than others. This is because the game has no indicator of how much damage you take during combat. The more hits you take, the easier it is to fling you over the edge, but it's hard to tell how far along you are because you don't get a counter or health bar or anything of that nature. On top of that, when you start a match, you better be in it for the long haul because there is no pause feature to be found. If you want to quit, you have to jump over the edge until your lives run out. But aside from that, I really enjoyed this. You can have a great time with these characters, and these stages are a blast to battle through. I even like the details such as the Tattletail Strangler parachuting down in the airplane stage. Also, check out the menu in the Chum Caverns. Um, excuse me, where is the chili pie or the much burger? So yeah, this game is great. All of these are really entertaining and worth trying out. They're all good in their own ways. It's also fun to make cartoon characters beat each other up. You can't go wrong with that. If you have any game recommendations, don't be afraid to comment them below. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.